Look at her love in her eye. Um, I'm going to go out with Chiquita today in the car. We'll go to Frankston. Um, it's 11 k's away, but I've got a letter from the pharmacist saying I have to go there every day to get my meds, which I don't <laughs> now, but I would still use it if need be. I'm going to go to the fruit shop and buy a whole lot of uh, fruit and veggies to, to start my uh, fruit and veggie detox tomorrow. I'm not looking to cure my liver cancer. That's not what I'm thinking at all. But if it does, yeehaw, way. I mean, way, yay. Yes. Um, I got a phone call today from my best friend, Patrick, who I've known for, I've been here 20 years. I've known him for 15, 16 years. You know Patrick. Patrick takes us in the ute. We go for a drive with Pat. Where's Pat? He's not here today. He rang me and he said he threw a blood and a urine test that they found out he's got prostate cancer. And I just watched a doco about it, about this guy in England. And so they took out his whole prostate gland, checked the area was clear, so no chemo, no radiation, that's good. And then, but he had to wear adult nappies, diapers, because he couldn't contain his urine. He, he just weed himself. So Pat's very skinny, so we'll have to get him some really tiny. I, I was just telling him what I know, and I said to him, Pat, this is not going to kill you. They've caught it very early, so they'll just take out your prostate gland, but you, you may lose the ability to be intimate, you know, with that. But he doesn't have a girlfriend anyway, but that's not the point, you know. Yes, there are other ways to be intimate, but for a man, you know, yeah. It's like when I had my breast reduction and then all the nerves were damaged. Forget it. It's gone. The ignition switch to the motor has been disconnected. Hmm. These nerves, you know. Anyway, so that, that was sad. And I said to him, Patrick, I'll be there with you through every appointment, ultrasound. And they're going to stick a needle in, do a needle biopsy. And um, I'll be with him through it all. He said he's not telling his family. It's his choice. He doesn't want to worry his older, his older mum. But um, I'll drive around there. Then we'll go off in my car and I'll take him to the appointments. So he's got someone with him. Because in the beginning of my treatment, I had Craig and Mishy and my sister Ella came over from New Zealand. But now I've got nobody. No one at all. No one. No one looking into things going, hey, why don't you try this? Or, hey, I'm going to take you to this. Um, nothing. It all lays on me. And I'm not interested. <laughs> um. I'm writing to my doctor. I found out how to. He said to you know, he said to me, "You can get the end of life pill, but you have to ask for it three times." I googled it last night, and for him to be able to prescribe it to me, he's got to just do a six-hour online course, and I and I found out what I had to do, which was write him a letter, and in nine days, don't just say I'm feeling like shit, I want to die. You have to say, "Can you help me die?" Um, you get the prescription, which never expires. Um, you can get the drug and just have it and keep it there. And that, just having it, I think, as a safety net, gives you the balls to keep living. It's like, I'll push on, yeah, I'll push on, I'll just push on. You know, I don't want to overdose on what I have because it could go horribly wrong. I could wake up and I see you, pull up, pull up. It's like, no. So if it's going to be done, it's going to be done, done right. So in nine days, I'll write him another letter. Um, yeah, I just want it to have it, to know I've got it. Like if I had a loaded gun in that drawer, yeah, it would be good. Like if I had a loaded gun in my glove box of my car, I would probably drive to more remote places in Australia than what I will do. 
You know, because you're there all by yourself. There is no one around. Mm. And people that aren't right in the head, they might go, ha ha. And I won't be, you know, I'll just go, hmm hmm. It's just that peace of mind, the safety net. You know, knowing that if things turn rough, you're in a wheelchair, your eyes are yellow, your, you, your belly is distended, full of 20 litres of fluid that, that needs draining, you can't go to the toilet alone, nah, ah, ah. That's, that's, and I've already spoken to my mum about it and I've explained. They're doing a, a vote in New Zealand about euthanasia and I said to them, please vote yes for me mum. Even mum said, you know, if she got to that point where she couldn't look after herself physically, she wouldn't want to be here. So it's all very personal. But anyway, it's always good to have a safety net. So I'm going to try my hardest to get this, to get it. Once I've got it, I'll be like, yeah, now I can just forget about it and I'll live. That's how I feel. Yeah, all good. Anyway, I've rambled so long. See y'all. Mwah. Say bye. Say bye bye to all you peoples. She's so beautiful. She's starting to get a little grey on her nose, which makes me sad. She's only three. Ciao, y'all.